Eric Darling here with Darling Data, and uh, well, I mean, today's November 12th, so by the time this thing goes out to press, it'll be old news, but uh, this is SS, the SSS, SSS, and this, the SSS, SSMS, SQL Server Management Studio, that might be easier, uh, 21 preview behind me uh, with uh, fully integrated dark mode, so I don't know, um, I'm not going to do anything with this today, but uh, this is, I guess, what it looks like if you, if you have been living somewhere weird and have not seen this by now. So, I don't know. I think it looks pretty nice. I don't know that uh, this is what I'm going to be using uh, every single time I uh, do a presentation. Uh, there are a fair amount of people out in the world who uh, dislike uh, dark mode for tech presentations. They say that it's hard to read and, uh, I don't know, maybe, may, maybe it's... Maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong, I don't know. But anyway, uh, I'll, I'll let you vote in the comments if I, if I use dark mode or not. Anyway, back to blinding white mode. <laughs> blinding white mode. Uh, in this video, as, as promised, uh, I, I, I do promise you things, and I do deliver on my promises. Unlike the politicians you vote for, Eric Darling delivers. Maybe I should get into politics and bring my long track record of delivering you hot SQL Server action uh, <laughs> to government. Now that, I, now that I think about it, I don't know if I like that. I have to wear a suit a lot, apparently. I don't know, I don't know how, I'd, how well I'd do in those, um, that, that sort of thing. Uh, also, I don't know how, 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 how many conversations I'd get to have about isolation levels. I'd have to argue about stuff I don't know about. It's like starting from scratch. Uh, but anyway, I, don't know. I guess I guess that's most of government, though. So at least at least at least from 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 where I'm standing, average Joe citizen here. But uh, let's talk about snapshot isolation versus read committed snapshot isolation, because there is an important difference between the two. Uh, we've talked about some of the other ones, um, you know, uh, RCSI is opt out. You have, if you turn it on for a database, all the read portions of your queries will start using versioned rows when there are versions of rows that need to be used. Those row versions will either be uh, generically in TempDB or if you have accelerated database recovery turned on, they will be local to your user database. Um, what else? Uh, snapshot isolation is opt-in. You have to set the isolation level to allow snapshot in order for queries to use snapshot isolation. So you get to pick and choose which ones benefit from snapshot isolation, uh, whereas RCSI is the opposite. It says, all of you will benefit. You all use it. Do what I say, peasants. Um, if we're talking behavior generally, I would say that I like snapshot, isol snapshot isolation a little bit better. Um, I don't know, just a vague preference. It's, it's uh, you know, I, I, do, I do like that it um, disallows uh, a couple of the things that uh, read committed snapshot, iso snapshot isolation does allow. So uh, just for the sake of um, making things fit, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to shrink that down a little bit. So this all fits a little bit more nicely on the screen. So these are, these are the two choices you have for optimistic isolation levels in SQL Server. Uh, neither of them, neither of them allow dirty reads for the last damn time. Uh, read committed snapshot isolation does allow non-repeatable reads and does allow phantom reads. We're going to talk about exactly what that means in this demo. Uh, but just remember that read committed, the garbage isolation level, also allows those, but also allows read queries to block and be blocked by write queries and read queries to deadlock with write queries, which is a really unfortunate state of affairs. And unfortunately, the, the yoke that you are, are forced to, 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 to toil under if you are an average SQL Server user who does not mess with isolation levels. So uh, let us continue with the majesty of these demos. And uh, let's look at what happens. Let's look at what the, that difference really means. What, 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 are, what do non-repeatable reads and phantom reads mean in the context of optimistic isolation levels? Well, let's find out. So uh, let's get into the right database here. 
we're going to use uh, the right database. We're going to create a table called snip snap. Uh, I think I created this. I think that table name comes from uh, snapshots, but mm, uh, who knows? I, I might have just been having like a, a crabby moment, right? Uh, could have been that. Not really sure there. Um, whatever. Anyway, uh, we're going to insert two rows into this table, a little like the discipline crabs from Return to Zork. <laughs> hey, do what I say. Uh, we're going to insert two rows into this table. Uh, the ID column, the date, and the number, uh, one, three, get date, one, three, eight. Uh, we're going to put those in, and I think I didn't do that yet, so there should only be uh, the two rows in this table at current, which there is. And um, I'm going to enable both read committed snapshot isolation and snapshot, snapshot isolation for my database. So they're both turned on. You can turn both on. You can choose to use both under different circumstances. There is no law that says you have to have one or the other or both. You can choose these things. And uh, what I'm going to do is I've already put this uh, query into query helper number two over here. Uh, and note that the, so what the, the way that the best way to show you this is to begin a transaction and run two select queries with a slight delay between them. Uh, the reason for that is because when you begin a transaction and you run a query, uh, this is where uh, SQL Server will start for uh, the snapshot isolation queries. This is where SQL Server will put, like have all of the queries start reading the row versions from. That's going to be different from read committed snapshot isolation, which will start reading row versions from when each query starts. So with snapshot isolation, both, both queries start here. With read committed snapshot isolation, each query starts when it runs and with using the row version. So you can get somewhat different results from those. So uh, both, of the, both of these queries are in new windows. Now what's a little confusing to some folks out there in the world is that for this query, I am setting the isolation level to read committed. What this means is that uh, I am going to use read committed snapshot isolation. I'm not, I'm not going to be using uh, anything else for this, right? So like if you're the type of person who ever spelunks the, the, the running query DMVs or um, the uh, XML deadlock report or the block process report, it can be kind of confusing if you're using RCSI because like, like nothing in there actually says that you're using read committed snapshot isolation. It'll just say you're using read committed, but nothing, nothing in there says like you're using read committed with row versions, right? Because there's no query hint that says that. And the read committed isolation level, if you're using RCSI, effectively just like you, you're, you're using the version rows when, when that, when that, when those, when those uh, queries run. So. Uh, what, I, what I'm going to do is highlight these queries just so I, don't, I can't possibly mess anything up. Uh, I'm going to run this part of this query, and I'm going to run this. And then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to run this part of this query, and I'm going to run this, and hopefully my timing is going to work out. So now both of these queries are in their wait for, right? There was a very, very quick reads from this. And... Uh, what I've done, well, the, well, both of those queries were in their wait for state, is I've updated um, uh, the table to uh, change this query. Or, geez, I don't know why, I don't know why it keeps doing that. I think my control key is on the fritz. Uh, I've inserted a brand new row, and I've also deleted one row uh, from, the, from the table, right? So inserted a row with, for ID 2 and deleted ID three. So initially we inserted IDs one and three up here, just remember that. So when both of these queries finish, what we're gonna see for the query that used snapshot isolation is a consistent result for both queries, right? Like the update obviously didn't change a number to 138138, and we did not see uh, ID two inserted and ID three deleted. If we look at, um, the first set of results uh, up here, uh, what you'll see is that um, there was, excuse me, uh, a bit of a difference just between the, like when we run the actual get date part. That's less important for the snapshot side. 
on the read committed uh, snapshot isolation side, notice that we get two slightly different versions of things. Uh, so when we look at this, right, um, what we see is, uh, so actually it's kind of, kind of a good idea to look at this part. So when they both ran the first time, uh, these are the, the times that we got, right? So this one and this one. They are a little bit different because there was a little bit of lag between me running each one. But actually, no, these are the same because these are the values in the table. But uh, over here, we do see that we do see different stuff happening, right? Like this is where the results are different. So in the, for the first query, we do see ID 1 and ID 3, right? And this is just like the first query that ran under snapshot isolation. The difference is that under snapshot isolation, we saw those same rows again, right? So we did not have non-repeatable reads and we did not have phantom reads. For the second one that ran under recommitted snapshot isolation, now we see ID2 come in right here and we see that this thing has been updated. So for both of these, uh, these numbers are different from the snapshot isolation query, right? So there is a difference in here. So if you're, if you're out there trying to figure out which optimistic isolation level is right for you, there are a lot of things to consider. Um, there's you know, stuff like, uh, do I want all of my read queries to use an optimistic isolation level? Or, you know, I, honestly, I think snapshot isolation is a little bit easier to uh, begin with for a couple reasons. One, uh, you don't have to get exclusive access to the database in order to enable it. If you notice that there's a difference between, uh, well, I mean, this is me turning those uh, settings off, but if we come back to where I turned those settings on, it's the exact, it's the exact same command. For read committed snapshot isolation, the best way to enable it is to do the alter database, set read committed snapshot on, and then add this with rollback immediate command to it. Uh, my, 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 like when, I, when, when Kendra and I were presenting at PASS, uh, what feels like a month ago, but was actually at this point like a week ago, uh, you know, like I did talk about this a bit. And, you know, she brought up a, a, a time when she was trying to like do the whole dance where you set the database to single user and then you do your thing and then you, you know, try to do this. But she ran into like a, like there was a deadlock and her session got killed and then another user became, uh, another user became the, the, the single user for the database. And the only way for her to, <laughs> uh, the only way for her to get control back was to disable all the other logins on the server, uh, which is a pretty rough thing to have to do. So don't go the set database, single user, run the command, set multi-user thing, avoid that. Just use the rollback immediate. This does change your life a little bit though, because when you run this command, you do it, you should like run SP who is active a few times and make sure there's like really nothing going on. You don't want like any other like queries that like hitting the database, long running stuff, maintenance going on maybe. Like you don't want anything that's that might um, roll back and cause issues. Snapshot isolation, you don't need that. Snapshot isolation, you just say, hey, turn this on. So uh, if you're looking to start experimenting with, um, looking to start experimenting with uh, I optimistic isolation levels in SQL Server, I do think that Snapshot is the more approachable one because it doesn't require exclusive database access to turn on and you don't have to worry about all your queries suddenly you know, hitting version rows when they start doing stuff. You get to pick and choose which queries you want to use it, which can be a lot, which can be a lot easier for some people to grasp and be like, okay, like, I, like I, can, I can start applying this and see how it goes for some of these queries, right? Like, uh, you know, start applying it for, uh, you know, any read queries that you don't want to get blocked, but you want consistent results from. Start applying it to any select queries that, you know, might be at the root of blocking chain. They might be the lead blocker, because we talked about how select queries under, uh, under uh, pessimistic isolation levels like read committed can cause blocking, right? We have that key lookup thing in the plan that we talked about in the couple of videos back. So there are, like, you could selectively apply snapshot isolation to some queries and have a very successful time of avoiding a lot of the, um, avoiding a lot of blocking issues uh, in your database. 
the, the prob problem becomes, you know, where do your where do your queries come from? Uh, are you able to change like your the way that like a like ORM or an application does something? Uh, are you able to like change the store procedures to set that you, that you want to start affecting? Are you able to set allow snapshot isolation on for those and change the code in that way? So, so like there are some there are some like things about it that make it difficult if you don't have like full control over a database. Read committed snapshot isolation, you do have to get that exclusive access to the database. The easiest way to do it is that command with rollback immediate. But that does like that does vastly increase the surface area of stuff that you have to like trouble that you have to like test. You have to QA. You have to go through and make sure your queries are behaving in the way that you, you way that you want them to keep behaving. Right. Uh, you want to avoid the blocking, but you also want you know the like any like you know sort of like intermingled concurrent processes, like you know that might de that might depend on blocking. Granted, those are very very rare in my experience, but you might you might want to start figuring out. Uh, like you know, like which groups of queries you need to test together. So honestly, uh, I would be happy if anyone just started doing stuff with both. Uh, I scrolled a little too far there, but um, you know, the, like one of the one of the big differences between the two isolation levels, the two optimistic isolation levels, is within the context of a transaction, and you do need the transaction in order to see this stuff. When, uh, like, what what row versions? these queries are going to see. Um, this also affects when row versions are allowed to be cleaned up. So, you know, if you have, you know, if you begin a transaction with snapshot isolation and you do a whole bunch of stuff, you would see your version store get uh, a bit larger than you would uh, with, with read committed snapshot isolation enabled. So it's a lot of stuff to think about, but, you know, I think just generally uh, snapshot isolation as far as, you know, just getting into an optimistic isolation level is a little bit more approachable just because you can really limit the scope of what you have to like test and worry about. Um, you do have to be aware of the differences between the two though, um, because if you're counting on, you know, for the snapshot isolation queries, if you're counting on them in the context, again, of a transaction, picking up new rows from this or like change data from the new table, you might have to do some extra work to make that happen. Like, like, begin and commit stuff more often. <laughs> so you, you start a new transaction and start reading from, a, from a, a, a more recent part of the version data. But that is up to you. Or if you want that to be up to me, of course, my rates are reasonable and we can, we can discuss that at your leisure. Um, but yeah, uh, so this is you know, some, a bit about the differences between snapshot isolation and read committed snapshot isolation. As always, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. I hope that uh, you will continue on to watch the final video in this series, which will be about, uh, which will, in which I'll go into a, uh, uh, I don't know, I'm not going to say common, but, you know, if I had to pick a query pattern that would be, that might, that might expose a race condition and read committed snapshot isolation, uh, th this would, this would be it. So uh, we'll, we're going to look at that next for the last video in the series. And uh, I'm going to record that now. And then, I don't know, maybe maybe just go to bed. I have been an absolute lump <laughs> since getting home from Seattle. Uh, I'm not even sick. I'm just like exhausted. Right? It's just, I, wake up, I wake up ready for bed. So anyway, thank you for watching. I've, I've said way too much. <laughs>